Hey guys, so welcome back to another reading. This one is going to be why did they treat you the way that they did? First of all, I wanted to say thank you guys so much for the comments, likes, subscriptions, and just all the support I've been getting from you guys. It means so much. I read all your comments and they mean the world to me and I just wanted to say that um, up front because I feel like I've been getting a lot of support lately and it just means so much. I feel like we all have this energetic flow going back and forth between us. So thank you guys who kind of support this channel. So I wanted to get that out of the way for sure and let you guys know that it's just been on my heart. So I was like, let me say this. Um, and now onto the content of the reading. This one is going to be why did they treat you the way that they did? So this could be romantic, um, but it's not necessarily romantic. It's just going to be whatever spirit brings up. Um, so it, it really is ideally suited if someone didn't treat you well, if they treated you badly in some way. Um, that's kind of going to be what we're delving into. But, you know, if there's one thing I know with doing these readings is that you never know what spirit is going to bring up. So maybe it could be someone who treats you, who treated you well. I don't know. But um, this is kind of, to me, more along the lines of the karma reading and more along the lines of someone that didn't treat you right and getting to their motivations. So with that being said, we have these beautiful new pastries that arrived a few days ago that I love. Um, and so this one, is group one and you can see it has like red berries and a slice of grapefruit and um, a piece of kiwi I think anyway this one is number two um, this one is actually a slice of kiwi so I don't know what the one on that first thing was but um, and then it has a pecan some peaches and cream on the top this one has, I think they're black currants, but I'm not sure. They're like tiny little purple berries. Um, I think that's like an apricot and a raspberry. I love the raspberry. And this one has a pecan, um, a blueberry, a kiwi, and I think that's dragon fruit, which is one of my favorite fruits. So they all look really good. So if one is already calling your name, just go directly to that one. Skip ahead as soon as you feel called to. Um, if you need some more time deciding, you could close your eyes and see, kind of try to clear your head space and then see which one. Um, immediately comes to mind. Think of which one just pops into your head first. Um, it could also be one of the fruits. So, you know, you could do the little pink berries, red berries for number one or the grapefruit. For two, the peaches or the kiwi slice. For three, the blackcurrant grape things or the raspberry. And for four, the dragon fruit the blueberry um, so what whichever of those pop into your head go with those and I'm gonna be quiet now and let you guys tune in to the energy Okay, so hopefully you guys had time to decide. If not, feel free to rewind, pause, and spend a few more moments with all of the piles. But let's go ahead and jump into pile one. Hello, my lovely angels in pile one. You guys picked this beautiful red currant um, grapefruit slice pastry, and it looks really good. Um, but let's get into your pile. So I pre-pulled some cards, and during the intro I said, this is not going to be a romance reading, and of course, Spirit loves to um, make a fool of me. So <laughs> this looks like my romance deck um, straight away. So let me pull out the card that I had already kind of looked at and meditated on. So we got the Ten of Cups, the Knight of Pentacles, the um, Six of Pentacles reversed, the Fool, the Four of Cups, the Six of Wands, the Ace of Pentacles reversed, the Seven of Pentacles, the Page of Swords, the Two of Swords, and the Page of Cups, and the Wheel reversed, and the Wheel of Fortune reversed. So like I said, I you know my spirit guides have such like a rough sense of humor and they love doing this so i literally was like i'm not doing romance today and then of course you guys i think are my 
like relationship pile, which I was maybe thinking it might come through, but that's what it looks like to me. Um, and then let me go into some of my other cards that I got. So we got, we got third eye chakra, harmony reversed, partnerships and alliances, sacrifice reversed, wisdom reversed, material, um, material and spiritual partnership reversed obstacles and challenges and spiritual union so to me what i'm getting from all these cards so far is basically that um this was someone that kind of expected a long-term future with you and they were very upset and it was a real blow for them when they when things between you guys fell apart so it does look to me like this there was some romance element or it could have also been a business partnership or someone who this is someone who like imagined a long-term future with you and really wanted to be in partnership with you in some way so it could even be like a friend who kind of really um considered you their best friend kind of a thing and then you they felt like betrayed that's what's coming through the energy is betrayal like so it, it also like i said i shouldn't have said it was romance from the first because um now that i think about it it could also be business or friendship or something but this is definitely something coming through that is like i imagined a long-term partnership i imagined us joined together um long term and feeling very betrayed and very upset when that doesn't work out um it's like they were putting a lot of stock into this. They felt like they put work into it. They felt like they, I feel like they had really imagined something like long-term happening. Um, I feel like if it, like maybe this could have even been a casual friendship to you, but this person wouldn't have considered you a casual friend. Like in their mind, you were their best friend and you guys were going to go on vacation together and like go to Europe together or whatever. Um, but they feel like you didn't take the long-term thing as seriously or that they're just very upset that this thing they had imagined didn't work out. Like, I know for me, I was, I, I, what comes to mind is like, I get so excited whenever I'm going out to dinner and I have, like, I try to eat healthily and I have some food, like, preferences. Um, like, I'm gluten-free. I mentioned that before. So, I can't eat at every restaurant. So, usually when someone, like, invites me out to a restaurant, I'm, like, pumped. And I go and I look up the menu just to make sure there's stuff I can eat. Um, and I noticed that, like, when I do that, like, one of my friends told me, like, because if anyone cancels or anything changes, I get so disappointed. And one of my friends was like, you should stop looking up the menu to these places because every time, if there's any kind of switch, you're, like, bummed out. And it's, like, it's not even that deep, you know? But for me... I get all the more excited because in my mind I've imagined out like, okay, I'm gonna have this for the first course, this for the second, I'll have this for dessert, I'm gonna order this off the cocktail menu, you know what I mean? And I feel like that's the situation that happened here. Like this person was in their mind filling in all these blanks of like, we're gonna go here, we're gonna do this, this is gonna happen. Like they had imagined all these scenarios and it's like, if you just hear you're randomly going out to a restaurant and then it gets canceled, you're kind of like, okay, whatever. But when you've imagined that you're gonna have, you know, the lobster bisque to start, and then for your entree, you're gonna have the steak, and then for dessert, you're gonna have their special tiramisu that you read about on their website is like extra good and, you know, has like wafers flown in from Italy or something, you're gonna be way more disappointed when, than when you were just like, oh, okay, like just a restaurant, uh, sure, Bob's restaurant, okay. You know what I mean? Like you're not going to have um, emotionally invested as much. And so I just feel like this person, um, they were like, it's like they were all like all in is what I'm hearing. They were really um, counting on this or planning something with you. Like they considered you someone that would be in their life long term. Um, and so that's why they were so upset. Like 
yeah, like I said, when, when that restaurant thing doesn't work out, I'm always like, ugh. And my friends are like, who cares? Like, so what? And I'm like, well, I care because I was expecting to have that lobster bisque. Excuse me. I was looking forward to it. So <laughs> that's like the energy happening here is this person had made these plans. They were really invested in it. They were really excited. And I feel like they had imagined that, like, they really... I feel like this person had a lot of respect for you in a way. Um, I know that may seem backwards if they did something bad to you, but um, I feel like sometimes that's where like the most anger comes from is, you know, it's not the person that you're like, oh, what a loser, I don't care about this person. It's the person that you really respect, whose opinion you take seriously, and their rejection you're gonna take a lot harder than someone you don't really, you know, take into account that much or don't really um don't really respect all that much when someone whose opinion you value a lot is like uh i'm not really that into you it's gonna hurt a lot more than someone you don't really care about you know and also something else coming through is that this person felt a little bit humiliated it might have been because you guys were publicly known to be together or just that they had imagined that you guys would be known to be publicly together kind of a thing. Like um, like they had wanted to introduce you to their whole family or something, or you already had reached that stage. Or again, this could be a business or friendship, but it was something where either people already knew you guys were like in partnership somehow, you know, like, oh, you guys are the best friends, you guys are BFFs, or um, you guys are working on something together. But they feel like there's some element of like humiliation or publicly people seeing that you guys aren't it together and they're really um, afraid of like the judgment, I feel like, that that will come to them because of it. Um, and they also feel like, in a way, like, you're their lucky charm or something like I don't know why that's coming through but I feel like they they felt like you could really benefit them you know like being around you brought a lot into their life and so now that you're not in their life it's like the luck aspect is has been taken out somehow so whatever like maybe you again in the friend group like knew every like knew all the contacts and were the one who kind of would be like hey let's set, let's meet up with like Emily tomorrow and let's maybe you brought but it's like you were bringing something to this relationship that they feel like now is a big loss for them somehow um, I feel like it's something material not just like oh you have a great attitude or something but like something quantifiable so again like it could be like other contacts or but or I don't know, or like you always had some kind of, maybe you have some money and you were like treating them to meals out or something. But now that that's gone, they feel like something's been taken away from them. That's like, like again, material. It's not just like, oh, well they had such a fun personality and now that I don't get to hear their jokes anymore. It's more along the lines of actual like money, contacts or something that is you know like a real world quantifiable thing if that makes sense it's kind of hard to describe but um so what else why did pile one's person treat them the way they treated them why did pile one's person treat them the way they treated them So we got flexible reverse, and I do feel like this person is very inflexible. I, I honestly think this person, the energy that I'm picking up on right now is very childish, like very almost entitled. Like they are like, you know, I'm getting like, who's that kid from Charlie and the Chocolate Factory? Violet, Violet Beauregard or something. I don't know what her last name is, but she, she was always saying like, daddy, I want it or like, daddy it's mine and that's what I'm like kind of the energy I'm getting like I feel like this person um you know we got third eye chakra and I actually think they're saying that that was like this is kind of blocked in this person because we also got the um page of cups reversed and I feel like this person is not like tuned into 
um, their spiritual side, I feel like they are very shallow. Even if they were to be involved in the spiritual community somehow, like maybe into crystals or astrology or something, it's shallow. I mean, you can be involved in literally anything and be shallow. You know, I have friends who are like in high level academics who are like not that smart, you know, I mean, not, not friends, but like I know people. <laughs> and the thing is, is that, you know, there are people in the astrology community or in the um, metaphysical community who aren't actually like, don't even know what they're talking about. And I'll read them describing something about astrology. And I'm like, where did you even, what? That, that That's the complete opposite of astro of like astrological truth. Like they'll say all Aries are like really sleepy and you know, like really easy going and it's like no You you don't know anything about astrology or what's going on So my point is is that I feel like either way this person is just very immature They are very no matter what they might not present that way, but deep down in their heart they are very um rigid and kind of entitled like they had this idea that things should go their way because I feel like some a situation like this like the vibe I'm getting is kind of like something happened and you kind of pieced out of this or you were like like this relationship fell apart and when that happens a lot of times I think what you know, both sides to do is some self-reflection, like, okay, well, how did I contribute? And how did this person contribute? And, you know, but this person, I feel like they just blamed you completely. And it's almost like they went on the war path or they were like, just really vindictive and nasty. And it's almost like this whole friendship or partnership that you guys had going on, they just got it completely wiped out and they went into like enemy mode right away, which is so immature because at least even if a relationship ends, at least you can be grateful for the time, you know, and maybe end on like good terms. But it's like, there's no way to really end on good terms. I feel like this person is also very reactionary um, and very, like something bad happens and they'll kind of blow it out of proportion. Like it could be like the waiter is kind of slightly distracted talking to them. And this is the kind of person who would be like, excuse me, did you see that they spoke to the, that they spoke to us that way? Wow, that is so rude. I'm gonna complain to the manager or something like, um, which it's fine to complain to the manager if someone's being really nasty, but you know, this is like someone who would complain over the smallest thing. Um, almost like a power play. I feel like this person is very, likes to be on top and gets very offended if they, um, if they don't feel like they're the ones in charge. I almost feel like they imagined that you were under their thumb and that was the dynamic of the friendship where like you were the one who you're like a more gentle energy is what I'm picking up on and you would kind of go along with them to make them happy like if they suggested a restaurant and you'd be like okay yeah we can go there and even if you didn't really like the look of it or you didn't really like that cuisine you'd be like sure that's fine because you're just more you kind of kept the relationship rolling and then once you got to a place where emotionally you were like i want to stand up for myself and i you know i don't actually like that restaurant i kind of hate it can we go somewhere else and then it got blown up into you know some kind of a fight or this person could intuitively sense that you were kind of piecing out and so they were like let me go into like completely aggressive mode and we did get a yin reverse and I, that's what I'm kind of picking up on is like you had the yin more receptive gentle energy and then this person has a lot of aggressive energy but not in a positive way because we usually think of yin yang as positive both sides you know bringing an important component it's more like this person they're not bringing the energy in a constructive, positive thing. They're just very selfish and they're just doing whatever the heck they want and only doing things that serve them. So let me get some more cards. Why did this person act that way? Why did this person um, do what they did? Why did this person do what they did? Okay. We got cornucopia. Wow, so there's deceit, man holding a coin. And I dropped a bunch, but we got blossoming abundance. And we got second chakra Archangel Ariel, healer of the ages and the world. 
So there's a lot of cards here that relate to wealth and that's something I'm also like, again, I think it's like the Violet, I, whatever her last name is from Willy Wonka and the Charlie Fact and the Chocolate Factory. <laughs> Sorry, I'm tired. Um, and Charlie, Charlie and the Chocolate Factory. That's the name of it. Sorry, I'm, I, I am tired today and it's Mercury Retrograde. So, um, but yeah, I feel like this person, they're very focused on themselves. They're very focused on what benefits them. And I feel like, again, there's this sense of, it's almost like you took something away from them or like you stole from them or you robbed them. And when I'm thinking about it, I'm like, I feel like the thing that they feel you stole was you. Because again, they have this very like odd idea of entitlement towards you that like you should do things they want and you should be doing things on their schedule and you should be doing whatever they say. Um, and they just assume that. That's just like their MO. It's not even, I don't, I don't even think it's like a conscious thought they have of like, this person is mine. Like they wouldn't say that out loud, but that's just an assumption they make. It's nothing about you. It's not like you did something to make them feel that way and you shouldn't feel guilty or feel like, oh, well, I gave them that impression or I let them walk all over me. I mean, maybe you could do some self-reflection about that, about like honoring your truth earlier in a relationship, but I feel like you guys have a very sweet and nurturing side and with the right person, they are going to really love that. And this person, I feel like when you, um, kind of left or took yourself out of this a little bit it's like they went scorched earth and they were like well if it's almost like if i can't have them nobody will kind of a vibe like they would not tolerate seeing you succeed seeing you do well in the world without them and so they went into like I'm gonna destroy this person mode. And I feel like some of you have a little bit of like scars from that, a little bit of almost like trauma. Like how do I possibly trust again? How do I move on again? But I'm hearing from spirit that she will. And actually that spirit guided this relationship to end. And also that it needed to end the way it did because if it hadn't ended as badly as it did, you would have continued to interact with them and go back with them because you're a very forgiving, loving, kind person. And also you have a tendency to kind of blame yourself or be like, well, what did I do? Well, okay, uh, you know, maybe I shouldn't have said it that way, kind of an energy. And so you would have continued doing that and let, let this person walk all over you and the relationship was holding you back because actually you bring way more to the table than this person. It's funny because this person is so full of themselves and thinks that they like deserve the world, but you're the one who had the beautiful, bright, shiny energy that was like the standout in this relationship. Like your guys' energy has so much potential for wealth, for success, and you guys just have like this it factor is what I'm picking up on in this group. It's like you guys have something very special about you. And that's why this person was so mad when you left. You probably don't even realize that your presence is a lot of the reason why you guys would get invited to parties or would get, you know, um, having people like you or like, like any kind of like shine or sparkle in this relationship was brought there by you. I remember, I'm remembering like this line from Sex in the City and she said, um, she said like, uh, she was talking about her breakup with Big and she was kind of ranting about it and she's like, and who is he? I'm the one who brought the Zaza Zoo. And she said also like, she was like, I poof all the time. I guess she meant like, as in like, she's special and she's like, he never does. And I, I don't know, I can't remember that exact quote. It's really funny. Um, it's such a funny scene cause she's just kind of ranting after the breakup. And I feel like that's what you guys need to know. You guys are the ones who bring the Zaza Zoo, the kind of special magic that a person can have. Like I think the French call it je ne sais quoi. That's what you guys have. You have this very special quality to you. And that's why this person who thinks they deserve the best of the best was so drawn to you. It's because you guys have this beautiful quality and this person doesn't. But that's not how they would act or even how they would see it. Like again, 
this person is very just not thinking consciously. I would say even borderline delusional, to be honest. So they just have come into this like entitled attitude and it's almost like fake it till you make it. I feel like deep down they know that they're not, you know, they don't deserve all this crazy stuff that they kind of entitled in a very entitled way ask for. Um, but they're just gonna put out that attitude because it's like easier. Kind of like, you know, you'll hear stories about someone scamming their way into like a party full of VIPs or something. And they'll say, well, I just, I just acted like I was a celebrity and I just walked in and they just let me in. And like, that's how this person kind of acts. Like they act like they have a lot going on um, because it gets them further, but they know deep down that you were the special one in the group, you know? And I feel like this, this situation has been ended on purpose to have you guys come into more of your own blessings. And I feel like you guys are the type who does well in a relationship or when you're close to someone or when you have a close friend or, you know, a close like business associate, you like to be in that kind of relationship energy. And what I want you guys to know is that that is a good thing. And in the future, you're going to find someone who echoes that back for you and who loves that about you and who honors you in the way you deserve. Um, but you needed to unlearn some of those like self-sacrificing qualities. It's good to be self-sacrificing to an extent, but not when it means that you're letting someone treat you in a way you don't deserve, when you deserve better. And so you guys needed to learn to come into your own power and to respect yourself and prioritize yourself. And because of that, this relationship had to go. And I think you guys are in a process of ascension and moving past this into like a better, higher plane of spirituality. And so on that new level, it's like you're leveling up and this person's energy is way kind of beneath you, um, spiritually speaking. And so you have to discard it. Like it had to get rid, it had to go. Um, and so spirit was had a hand in how things ended, even if you felt like it was traumatic or difficult just know that spirit wanted this person completely gone they wanted them out you know like one of my favorite lines from outcast is let bygones be bygones and you can go and get the hell on like that's what needed to happen it was like don't let the door hit you on the way out and so they needed to just kind of kick them out like a bouncer dragging someone out of a bar you know and so it might not have gone down as smoothly as you would have liked and it might have been a little you know more traumatic for you than you would have liked but it was a ultimately very positive thing and you guys are going to grow from this period and move into more abundance for yourself and I feel like those kinds of relationships where you will be honored and valued and I also think this person maybe try to make you not realize how special you were because it made them uncomfortable and they like to be the star of the show. And so you're going to be in a relationship, whatever kind, whether it's a friendship or whatever you want with someone who can not only give you that closeness and feeling of being, you know, having a good friend or a good person you're close to, but also someone who will not be trying to bring you down, but who will respect you, who won't be bringing conflict and chaos into your life and difficulty and just, you know, constant issues. Um, you are going to find someone who gives you a beautiful energy that will be a delight for you. And that's the energy that you guys deserve. So I really hope that helped you guys. Please let me know if it resonated um, and make sure to like and subscribe. I am trying to power through all these Mercury retrograde readings, but they're a little tricky with, you know, the planet of communication. I know I already sound a little loopy sometimes, so this doesn't help, but I hope it resonated. Please let me know if it did, you guys. And I will be back soon, very shortly, with another reading. Sending you guys so much love and light. Take care. Bye. Hello, my lovely pile twos. You guys picked the kiwi apricot um, pastry. It looks really good. Yeah, with like walnuts and an almond. Looks really good. So let's get into your pile. I pre-pulled some cards. So let's get into them. You guys got the magician. You got the 
Four of Swords, the Page of Pentacles, the Seven of Cups, the Nine of Pentacles, the Five of Cups, the Knight of Swords, the Three of Pentacles, the Six of Swords, the Hierophant, the Queen of Swords, and the King of Pentacles reversed. Um, and I also pre-pulled some of the Psychic Tarot and we got Solar Plexus Chakra, the Heart Chakra, the Accelerated Motion, Hope, Heartache and Loss, Obstacles and Challenges, Conflict and Defeat, Love Begins, Choose Wisely, and finally Deception and Envy Reversed, which is basically what I'm getting as the theme of this um, reading for you guys. This is about envy on the part of this person. They kind of see you as like a master manifester, as very powerful, as very someone who has a ton of potential and very um, like coming into their own power. And so it motivated a lot of feelings of envy on their end, um, a lot of feeling of lack and less than. And it's almost like they were trying to sabotage you or make you derail off that path that they kind of see for you. Um, there was a lot of like taking in of, you know, taking in of, but like I feel like this person spent a lot of time kind of watching you that you might not he even have realized or been aware of. This person really like almost like studied you and they were very aware of you in a way that I think you, I don't even think you noticed it. Like I think you kind of stay in your lane, do your own thing. You know, I don't think you would be aware that this person was um, looking out for you the way that they did, but not in a positive way of looking out, in a very negative, like trying to see what you were doing, trying to make sure you weren't getting ahead, kind of competitive energy. Um, and so, yeah, this person spent a lot of time just like thinking about you, ruminating about you, and I feel like their main thing, even if it's subconscious, is that you guys have an energy of success. You have something special about you, and this person could tell. And this is what really drove them crazy and led to a lot of envy on their end. Um, they, they see that about you, and they see this kind of light coming from you, and it really, it really drives them crazy and they spent a lot of time again that's coming in really strong but they just spent a lot of time thinking about you but I don't feel like they would have communicated it to you like I don't feel like they would have told you like hey I spent all last night um, you know as soon as we got home from work I just spent the whole night like looking at your Facebook page and stalking your Instagram and like looking up the Instagram of your ex-boyfriends and your cousin and your sibling, like they, they wouldn't tell you that, but that was what was going on and that was the energy around this situation. Um, and so them treating you the way you did, it's not something that developed organically. Like it's not like you did something that really annoyed them. You know what I mean? Like it's not like you guys had like a friendship falling out because it was never a genuine friendship from the jump. This person always saw you in this way. They were always negative towards you because of the jealousy they have towards you. They might have pretended to be your friend or pretended to be close to you, but it was fake and it was not actually their true intentions. They never really intended to have like a genuine heart-to-heart -heart friendship with you, if that makes sense. So let me pull some more cards for you pile two um let me cleanse this deck and find out what why did pile two's person treat them the way that they did why did pile two's person treat them the way that they did fork in the road orphaned Thinker, what did I say about thinking? Yep, TikTok reversed. So this person, yeah, there. you guys have a lot of potential. You might not even realize that, but that's how this person sees you very much is as someone who has a ton of potential and could be very successful one day. 
Um, and that really irritates this person. I feel like this person has a very bad emotional regulation. Um, you might not, I, I don't think they would necessarily present this way, but I feel like this is a negative person in general. Um, they might struggle with depression or just negative thoughts. Um, I feel like they might not, again, I feel like this person is very measured in what they communicate. They wouldn't be the type to come out and tell you, you know, some people are very open and transparent. I mean, I'm very honest and transparent, but a lot of people want to play things very close to the chest. They're not the type to say like, oh my God, you know what? I was so depressed last night and I, you know, I ended up listening to old sad songs or whatever. Like, you know, there's nothing wrong with necessary, with certainly with struggling with depression. I mean, there's absolutely nothing wrong with it. Um, and there's nothing wrong with being sad or upset, but what, when it is a problem is when that funnels into like this ball of negative energy that hangs around you and stays around you and kind of snowballs into negative behavior towards others. Like you can be the saddest person ever, but hopefully you're not directing that towards random strangers. You know what I mean? Like I can be having a bad day, a, the worst day ever, but it really still doesn't give me the right to try to ruin everyone else's day you know what I mean or try to really hurt people and be cruel and that's kind of what I'm seeing is like this person has a lot of negative energy hanging around them they might even have some spiritual attachments some of them like might have some kind of spiritual entity that has kind of tapped into their energy source and follows them around and causes them to do really bad stuff um you know like it could be like a ghost or even a demon or something that is negative energy but i just feel like this person is full of negative energy like they just are carrying it around with them like a little dark cloud hanging over their head you know and um i feel like they wouldn't necessarily present that they wouldn't necessarily ever tell you that they were sad or they were upset or you might not even know what a negative place they're in inside their head, you know? I think this person um, has a negative way of like going through the world and a lot of problems and instead of addressing that and trying to fix it, because we can all fix whatever problems we have, we can all fix it no matter what you have going on, even if it's like the worst trauma ever, you can truly heal it, like really, you actually can. Um, and so, um, this person though they don't want they don't want to heal it really they haven't taken any steps to heal they just kind of direct it outwards and i feel like because you are like this bright light um this person pretended to be nice to you pretended to appreciate you but the whole time it's like they were studying you it's almost like they like doing this they enjoy this this is why i say it might be like another entity because it's like there's something very calculated about this and almost like like it's not even like being depressed because a lot of people who are depressed they don't want to be depressed of course this is like this person is really enjoying um bringing negativity around to people they really enjoy it's like the thrill of the hunt or something it's like someone you know going off to decide to like hunt foxes or something and they're like chasing the fox around they enjoyed kind of strategizing about how to um bring you down and I feel like they would do it in like little innocuous ways like if you were like oh look I bought a new coat they'd be like oh that's really interesting oh my god wow you are brave to wear that color <laughs> I could never do that or something you know what I mean and you're kind of like afterwards like huh was that a compliment or was that I mean is this a weird color on my coat and suddenly the coat that you loved so much you can kind of never put it on again without thinking of their comment and thinking about like, uh, does it, is it too bright? Is it too dark? Whatever, you know, whatever color it is. Like they just loved to get in your head and kind of twist and turn it. And like this person has, again, a lot of negativity themselves. And so they like to push it onto other people. They like to try to get in people's heads and kind of screw around with it. And so, um, 
again, they see you guys have so much potential and this is one of the reasons, this is something that like irritates them. You guys got Unfinished Symphony and I think that, you know, that's like the potential you guys have to be this, like a, a symphony is like a masterpiece, you know? It's not just like a song, like a symphony is so above and beyond that and it's on another level. And I feel like you guys have the capability of really having this beautiful, amazing life and you have this, um, like high vibrating energy that other people pick up on and so because of that that really irritates this person one thing you'll also learn when you start working on your energy and healing yourself is that higher vibration people tend to irritate low vibration people um, because low vibration people are one already existing in an energy of annoyance negative energy whatever and so when someone is high vibrating and they're very positive they'll tend to be like just completely annoyed by that person because it's an energetic mismatch. It's just like if someone came up to you and started speaking to you in like a completely foreign language that you had no idea what they were saying and they wouldn't stop and they were speaking to you in that foreign language for hours and just you had no idea of any of the language like at a certain point you'd be you would be annoyed just because you're like I don't I, this to me it, it doesn't make sense and so it just sounds you know like noise it just sounds like discordant noise that I can't access and that's like the energetic mismatch that happens between low vibrating people and high vibrating people and the low vibrating people tend to react with like anger and rage and sabotage um, and they're also jealous because it's like they wish they could be high vibrating, but they can't, you know, because they're in this negative state. So you, I mean, I know it stinks, but in a way, in a weird way, you should take it as a compliment that this person um, reacted to you in this way, because I feel like it's proof that you're doing a lot right, that you've got a lot going on. Um, and I know like it sucks to be treated this way, but it is a compliment that this person saw you in this way. So let me get into the next deck. Um, why? Oh my God, it just flew out. Envy. Yep, envy is exactly what was going on. Um, financial constraints. Again, I feel like this person, see, door to personal healing and happiness. I love this card and that's where you're headed. Like you guys are on this trajectory towards success. I feel like you guys have a very positive energy to around you and I'm getting that. And it's so, so this person, it like makes them really mad, you know? You know how like you'll hear about like celebrities that have never heard a fly that would never do anything bad to anyone and they'll get like randomly hated on. Like, and it's like they just want to block the success from coming in. You know, though there will be those people that just, you know, can't stand to see someone else do well. And I know it's hard to even, it's hard for me even to understand it. And I have been kind of studying the spiritual work for a long time and trying to get my head around it. And I still don't understand why you would ever want to stop someone else from having success when it doesn't even affect you. You know, it's like there's room for everyone. And if you succeed, I can succeed. And if they succeed, you can succeed and I can succeed. But a lot of people don't, you know, they have like this scarcity mindset. And if you succeed, they can't succeed. And also a lot of people who have gone through like a lot of negativity for themselves, they feel like, why should they succeed when I had to do all this to get, you know, to get here? Or I had to do all this and I'm only here. And there's like this bitterness that builds up and they don't want to see you going to the top when they feel like their life sucks in comparison, you know? And I feel like this person is generally hostile um, in a lot of areas of their life. They deal with hostility and they might deal with like anger issues and stuff, but, um, but especially you trigger them because you have so much positive energy about you. And again, it's just an energetic mismatch for them. Um, they're very negative in general in their life. And so, you know, when they see you like walking around with a smile or with people being drawn to you, it just really sends them into a very negative mindset. So we're going to get some more cards for pile two about why did this person treat them this way? Why did this person treat them this way? Field of dreams. Okay. 
We got Mountain, Intention, Education. So you guys are on like a trajectory towards success. And we just got Metamorphosis. You guys are like, I feel like you guys are like a butterfly about to come out of the cocoon. You guys are really um, like on this beautiful journey and you have just like, I'm seeing like sunshine kind of like you guys have this, you might be a Leo or have some Leo placements or strong sun placements, but you guys have a lot of positivity around you. Um, and I feel like you guys are just positive people in general. Um, and because of that, this person, again, they're just driven into this like anger, rage, they're very upset by it, they don't like it. Um, and so you just became a target of them because of their own, um, like honestly, they, I mean, I'm trying not to be harsh, but this person has a very like putrid energy about them. They're very angry, they're very hostile. I feel like they're the kind of person that would constantly have road rage, you know what I mean? Like constant, even if they do have blessings in their life, like even if they are wealthy, I feel like they're the kind of person who would be just miserable all the time. I'm almost getting like narcissist vibes or someone who is just, yeah, like very jealous of people in general. Um, and I feel like they made a particular target of you because again, they see your potential. They see what you could bring to the table. Um, and like I going back to the celebrity thing, I've seen it in so many celebrities that have reached a huge amount of success that randomly people will just totally take a disliking to them. And it's like, they'll just have an insane amount of haters for no reason. Like it doesn't make sense. And it's like, wh why, why would you hate on this person? Like I mentioned it before, I am not like, um, like a mega fan or something. I mean, I, re I really like her music, but I've never been to a show or anything. Although, I mean, I'm sure I would love to go if I get the chance, but I, with Taylor Swift, like you see that with her where she never really did anything to anyone. And yet there were so many people that would come against her for no reason. And all she was doing was putting out relatively positive songs about love, about romance. But that's the thing. It's one thing when you succeed, when you're kind of tapping into like negative energy and singing like kind of darker energy songs. Um, and no one really gets offended by that like honestly but if you start singing really high vibrating songs and singing about love and positivity it's so weird but the artists that do that a lot of times will make people absolutely go nuts and i can think of other examples but i don't want to list them all off but the point is is that when someone has a lot of that super positive sun energy that they're exuding a lot of times it brings in that rage that envy that you know, why can't it be me? That comes from this person's own pain that they're not willing to confront. Um, and so all they can do is like, look at the contrast, you know? It's kind of like if you lived in a garbage dump and you had to look at someone living in a mansion. It'd be one thing to live in the garbage dump if everyone you knew lived in a garbage dump next to you, you'd be like, okay, like this isn't ideal, but whatever, this is life. But when you have to see someone living in a beautiful mansion with like a manicured lawn and like a fountain out front and like, you know, I don't know, a horse-drawn carriage or something crazy like that they had driven around in, you'd be really mad. I'd be mad if I was in the garbage dump and look, have, having to stare across the way at someone like being fed caviar in their window, I would be mad. And that's what's going on. I'm not saying that, you know, this person literally lives in a garbage dump, although I don't know, maybe, maybe they do, but, um, but I'm saying that energetically they do, they live in like filth, like energetic filth. They have a lot of negative energy, a lot of anger, a lot of rage that they're not doing anything to healthily address. They see the potential in you for great success and it really irritates them because again, it serves as contrast because even if this person has reached material success and they are wealthy, um, they're never gonna be happy. And it's like, there's no point in being in a mansion if you're gonna be miserable inside the mansion. You know, there's no point in being in a ball gown if you're crying the whole night in the ball gown. So it's like, 
this person is very unhappy in general. They see that you're a happy person, that you're like a positive energy type of person and it really drives them crazy. Um, so I'm, as much as it stinks, I would encourage you guys to tap into your optimistic nature and you know, remind yourselves that this is a big compliment. And it's like, you know, pat yourself on the back, like, oh my God, this is so great. Like how many rappers talk about haters and talk about, you know, the people that hated on them? Almost all the rappers I can think of do that. Why? Because whenever anyone has the destiny of success, energy hanging around them, they do attract haters. It's not like they all the rappers just randomly lost their minds and started talking about it for no reason. They talk about it because it does exist and it does come out when someone is on the path to achieving a lot. And so, you know, that's just something you're gonna have to be okay with. Whenever you're doing something that has the potential to really succeed, you're going to be faced with people who don't like it, who are mad about it. I mean, you know, it doesn't make sense. It's stupid. It's a waste of their energy, but there's nothing you can do about it. All you can do is just, you know, ignore it. And like, speaking of rap songs, like brush the dirt off your shoulder or whatever, like just, Ignore it, you know, and take it as a big compliment. Take it as like, a, wow, look at me. Look how great it is that, you know, these people don't like me so much because that must mean I'm doing something really different and really cool. Um, you can listen to, I feel like the energy for this would also be like Get Up 10 by Cardi B. Um, and she talks about like how many people doubted her, hated on her, and, you know, it, she had huge success um, despite all of that. So again, the point is, is learning to ignore it and learning to have it not let it get to you because I know it's difficult when someone's coming against you and being a hater and being rude. And a lot of times, especially if you're a sensitive, sweet person, you're, you know, you can take it personally or think, well, I must have done something to deserve this because I would never do this to someone unless they'd really hurt me. So maybe I, maybe I did something. Maybe it was my fault. No, it wasn't. It's just this person is a crazy hater and they're kind of a loser. And like I said, they're kind of living in like a trash dump um, emotionally and spiritually. So just let them, let them live, let them be like Oscar the Grouch and let them stay in their trash and just you move on to your mansion and just enjoy, you know, because there is nothing, there is no reason to take this person seriously, to take it on or to absorb it. Just, just dis disregard it and, and keep it moving. So I really hope that helped you guys. Please let me know if it did. I post these videos every few days, so make sure to like and subscribe if you wanna see more. Mercury's in retrograde, so I always kind of feel iffy about doing these readings during Mercury retrograde, but I hope this was um, helpful for you guys and I hope it resonated. Please let me know if it did and if you have any reading ideas because I am kind of running out of ideas. So let me know if you have any reading requests and I will see you guys in the next video sending you so much love and light bye hey pile three so if you guys picked this beautiful black currant pastry this is gonna be your reading I am so excited to read for you guys today um, so let's get into it I pre pulled some cards so let's start with the reading you guys got the five of Pentacles reversed the moon the Three of Swords reversed, the Four of Swords reversed, the Two of Swords, so a lot of swords, the um, Five of Wands, the Ace of Pentacles, Strength reversed, Ace of Cups, the Ten of Swords, the Hanged Man, the Eight of Cups, the Tower, and finally the Five of Swords. So first of all, I feel like, again, I said in my opening, I was like, this isn't going to be a romantic reading, but I'm getting romantic vibes for a lot of you in this. Um, I feel like this person felt a lot of connection to you and they felt a, very hurt by you guys. So this might not necessarily be romantic, I guess. It could also be a friend or a business associate or anyone you knew really, but it's definitely an energy of feeling very hurt and like their heart was wounded. Um, like it's like their emotions were in it and their emotions are for sure wounded in this situation. So the other cards I pulled are Conflict and Defeat, 
Um, discontent and boredom reverse, light, deception and envy, partnerships and alliances, third eye chakra, passion ignited, material and spiritual development, and temptation, which is kind of like the devil card. So I feel like this person, what's well, coming through really strong, well, honestly, I'm getting a lot. And so I feel like what I'm getting is for a lot of it, this for a lot of you this person didn't know how to approach you is what i'm getting or didn't know how to handle you like i feel like maybe you weren't aware of this or maybe you were but there was a lot of mental turmoil on their end regarding your relationship in the first place um not in a bad way or like a i'm thinking of breaking up with this person way but more along the lines of they really had a lot of interest in you and they didn't know how to show it and they didn't know how to like make this happen the way they wanted to you know um they didn't know how to bring things to fruition in a way that was like their desired outcome i guess so like whether you guys are aware of it or not this person felt spent a lot of time kind of thinking about you and like it's like you made them nervous kind of an energy they they put a lot of emphasis on you i feel like a lot of them hid this from you in the way you would hide it from someone you you know you you wouldn't want to let them know how vulnerable you were like if you really you might even tell someone you liked a little bit like hey i really like you just to just to be smooth and lay on the charm you know but if you really 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 like someone they're gonna make you super nervous and you're not even gonna want them to know you know um like it's almost like when you like someone so much, your feelings get way more vulnerable. And so this person was very vulnerable towards you at that stage of the relationship. Um, and so there were things about the depths of their feelings that they didn't come forward with. It could also be, like I said, a friend, a business relationship, but I'm getting romance for a lot of this. Um, this person just really put a lot of emphasis on the relationship and I feel like they didn't know quite how to um, like there's what's coming through so strongly is just this kind of fear of being like fear of doing the wrong thing fear of putting themselves out there fear of um, fear of being rejected fear of you rejecting them like it's like they what i'm getting is this person really liked you a lot um but they were trying to go about it in like um not a sneaky way but they were trying to kind of play it cool i feel like they just didn't know like what the best way to go about it was you know um and so they kind of hid their emotions somewhat from you didn't let it all out didn't let you know exactly how much they were like invested in this so i feel like whenever things fell apart um there was a lot of emotional turmoil for them this was like a hugely upsetting moment i feel like you guys they probably hid from you the extent to which this was like a complete like disaster in their life they probably didn't let you know didn't want you to know how much they had put into this relationship energetically um or emotionally and so you probably didn't even realize the extent of like a dark period this person went through when you guys broke up like i've heard stories of people who you know they still are still upset about their ex-girlfriend breaking up with them in high school and they're like 70 years old you know what i mean or they're still they still think about the one that got away and they're 65 you know and i feel like that's kind of the vibe or energy here this person um like the ending of this or whatever happened was a huge loss to this person um, that really brought on like a personal crisis. For some of them, I feel like they haven't even still recovered. Like it's like they're still in this period of, um, of trying to like move on from this, but they can't. A lot of them aren't even capable of like emotionally addressing it healthily. Um, and so it's like, yeah, because this person stuffs so much down. I feel like if they, you know, if they had approached this very respectfully and honestly, um, then 
I feel like it wouldn't be so many hidden emotions that went into it. A lot of the pain is because this person keeps so many things so close to the vest and doesn't want to come out with it and doesn't want to be like uh, feel vulnerable or feel weak um, and so it's like that's what's kind of sabotaged this person and actually worked against them but when you guys had whatever happened there was a huge sense of loss I mean we got the hanged man we got the tower we got the ten of swords we got the um, we got I'm so we got the t I am so tired and I'm like misreading cards. We got the eight of cups. Um, we got <laughs> we got the five of pentacles. Um, this person and we got the three of swords. This person was so upset when um, when you left. Like I just I can't even go over all the like negative cards we have here. But there are just so so many things that talk about like the pain they went through. It was a major 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 event in their life. It wasn't just like oh I'm really upset for a week, but okay I feel better now. And even if you are upset where it's like you're crying, it was like. A personal crisis for this person you know it really was overwhelming the amount of pain they went through it was not something that would be like a typical pain of a breakup it was more like every part of their life it felt like it was falling apart I feel like this person um, you know they really liked you and really felt drawn to you um, and so when this loss happened, um, for them, it kind of like touched their soul, you know? I, I feel like they didn't handle it maturely and didn't probably communicate to you um, that you had touched their soul um, because there's this constant like element here of like hiding stuff and not being honest and not wanting you to know the full effect you'd had on them. I feel like this person is a little bit concerned with like winning and wanting to seem like they, you know, have it all figured out. Um, and so I feel like they wouldn't have come to you and and been willing to be vulnerable or to ask for a closure, but it definitely restructured every area of their life. I feel like this person's friends probably, like they might have lost weight or they might have gained weight or they might, like I feel like this is the kind of pain that someone wouldn't be able to hide from, you know, the people around them because it was that level of pain. It wasn't a normal traditional breakup, like, oh, I'm really upset, but I'll be okay. It was really, permeating all aspects of their life and really kind of debilitating it might have even been something that like where they had their job put at risk or where you know um their friends were like what the heck is going on and we just got coming apart so yeah it's like mentally they were coming apart they couldn't handle it and um this was just you know really difficult this person was going through you know just a lot this was like a dark night of the soul this was like a complete and total shutdown of someone's life um, and we just had strength come out and fall on the ground and we had gotten strength reversed before so what they're saying is you know basically this person didn't feel strong they didn't even have the strength to deal with this situation this person was in a ton of mental turmoil a ton of pain um, and it was like they they didn't know how to handle it healthily. I don't even feel like they could. Um, like, how are they supposed to handle it healthily when they are literally in, like, meltdown? You know, it's kind of like if you're in Chernobyl and someone asks you, like, if you remember to take the trash out. You know what I mean? Or did you do the dishes? And it's like, excuse me, there's a nuclear meltdown happening. Like, the, no, this is the crisis that we need to deal with, not... Um, did I do the chores and so this person I feel like again this this just really overwhelmed so much of their life and they really didn't know how to deal with it but they were you know we just got commitment they were hoping for commitment or something long term with you they had imagined a future with you and I feel like that's what was so difficult for this person they really felt deeply drawn to you and understood by you I feel like in a way you might not have even realized the depth of their feelings for you this person you know for some of you guys I feel like this could definitely be a situation where this person never actually came forward to tell you their full feelings because again I'm getting so much um, circumspect energy that's like hiding 
Like it's like they don't want you to know how much they felt. So it could have been in a relationship, but either way, this is not a relationship where someone is really pouring their heart out and being fully honest. Um, it's definitely a relationship where things are held close to the chest and you know you might have had a feeling like you know I feel like this person really likes me like whenever we're together they kind of stare at me or you know they always say certain things you know like about the future or something but you never really got that confirmation but I'm here to confirm that this person definitely felt very strongly about you um for sure and so I think that's where if if they acted in a mean or nasty way um, it's definitely because of that pain so okay let me get this deck okay so we got orphaned what why did um, pile three's person act the way they did and treat them badly why did pile three's person act the way they did and treat them badly Deep knowing, reversed. Happy, happy, reversed. Clean it up, reversed. So, chaos and conflict. Yeah, this person was just in a lot of pain, um, a lot of emotional pain and turmoil. And I feel like and we got between worlds and exchanging gifts. So I feel like this person, um, you know, being like they had like a psychic feeling of being drawn to you. They had this psychic like knowing when they met you of like, oh, this person's really special. And they wanted to be they wanted to be with you and it was something coming from like such a deep intuitive place. You know, when you talk about people who fall in love at first sight or where people just like meet their partner and they just know, I feel like this person had that feeling towards you. And it was almost like they'd never felt this way before so they could never imagine that it wouldn't work out, you know? Because they were like, well, this is the feeling that people get when they meet their soulmate. And so that means we're soulmates and we're gonna be together. Um, and so it's like they did didn't they felt themselves opening up to you in a new way emotionally that they never really had with anyone else even if you guys weren't in a relationship because again I, I could definitely get that energy because this person I feel like they bungled it somehow so either you were in a relationship and they just messed it up or you weren't ever it didn't reach that stage because this person messed it up you know pretty early but regardless it was like this person felt this deep connection to you this unspoken deep psychic spiritual connection to you um, and when you guys didn't work out it just they could never have imagined that based on the depth of their emotions they would never have thought it was even possible to have you guys like not be together um, and so that caused a ton of pain for them um, I feel like they also like it's like the idea of you dating someone else or being with someone else causes them a lot of anger and a lot of rage. Um, you know, you guys had, I think, a very special connection, honestly. Um, and so, you know, this person, they kind of feel like you being with someone else would be like, a, an atrocity or something like it would be so wrong because what you guys had was so special and so amazing you guys might have a social you guys might have a soulmate relationship or a soul contract situation because we did get um we did get six contract and we also got strategy so you guys might have made an agreement to meet with each other um on this astral realm in this you know in this lifetime to like help each other with your soul mission and that might be part of that but i do know that this moment like launched this person into a dark night of the soul and of constantly questioning themselves and of really feeling like completely defeated completely down in the dumps completely horrible about everything um and so yeah it was very difficult for them and if they treated you badly afterwards or didn't treat you right in the course of this it's because they were very upset about everything that happened and it's because of that dark night of the soul that's that tower moment that this person went through as a result um you know they did have so much 
love for you and it's like it's a thin line between love and hate and a lot of times when that love relationship doesn't work out the person can be very um angry and upset you know um and what was like this beautiful pure thing can shift quickly into like rage and i feel like if this person did treat you badly, it's just because, um, it must be because of all the pain and suffering they're going through. Um, they're very like kind of depressed, upset energy. Um, and yeah, so, I mean, I think when someone is feeling that down in the dumps and full of pain, sometimes they'll like lash out at others, but I'm definitely getting like a romance vibe for this. I'm definitely getting that this person, I feel like they still think of you. I feel like they still kind of imagine what you're up to, feel connected to you. Again, they never really felt understood by anyone until you. And that's what I'm hearing was so painful is because you kind of opened this up to them and then took it away. Like it's like they they had never had filet mignon and you gave them filet mignon and just as they were like, this is amazing and I can't wait to eat the rest and you snatched it out of their hand, you know? Um, and they're back to eating like dog food or whatever. Like that's how they feel. Um, it's just like, it's been like this huge loss because they really did feel very connected to you. And it's very hard for them to move on. It's very hard for them to deal with this. It's very difficult for them to process even what happened. I think again, because they didn't, you know, they weren't honest, they weren't forthright. They probably should have approached you in a much more honest way in whatever this happened, whether it was a relationship, situationship, whatever. Again, they're, they're holding a lot to their chest and they're not being forthright with you about their emotions and they're trying to kind of, I feel like again, you made them feel so vulnerable and you made them care so much that they didn't want to, They it's almost like they didn't want to scare you away or they didn't want to seem crazy by being like, I'm completely in love and I just met you two minutes ago. So they, you know, they, they couldn't be honest or they felt like they couldn't be honest. Um, and so that became kind of a pattern in your dynamic of them like being like, uh-huh, yeah, no, I'm, I'm, I'm casual, totally cool. I'm on the same page. And the reality is they were very much emotionally invested in a deep way. So when things ended, it was very painful and they were just thrown for a complete loop. And that's like putting it mildly because we got so many cards from the hangman to the tower to the three of swords. I mean, they were just completely beside themselves. And probably I would say this is the kind of like hurt, pain, from a relationship that can last or take years for someone to heal from. And I don't think you guys should feel guilty at all. Um, I mean, a lot of times these kinds of soulmate relationships where you see them don't work out, either you are supposed to get back together in the future at a time when you guys can align better energetically and where it's the right timing, or you guys aren't supposed to be together and you were supposed to come into each other's lives to teach each other a certain lesson or point each other in the right direction or kind of, you know, have someone be redirected from whatever path they were on. Because again, the tower moment is ultimately always a positive thing. It just feels negative when, you know, everything's burning down around you. But ultimately, spirit always brings us something better to replace it um, if we trust, you know, God and everything. So I feel like yeah, even though, I mean, you guys shouldn't feel guilty at all, but this person just was going through a lot of pain. So if they did treat you badly, it was almost like, you know, someone that's in horrible pain screaming out because they have like a deep wound on their arm, like someone cut them or stabbed them with a knife. And obviously that person's going to be screaming and kicking and out of their mind with pain, you know? And that's kind of what was going on here. Like this person just, and I feel like, again, they also kind of blamed you because they were like, you're supposed to understand me. You're supposed to be the one who sees me down to my soul. And so they were just, you know, on multiple levels in a lot of pain and process it in a very um, unproductive way, I will say. So um, yeah, and they're also, like I said, they're kind of envious about the people you date, the people that are around you. And I think if anything, if they were nasty to you, it was almost like they wanted to throw a wrench in the cogs of you moving on. Um, and so they wanted to do something to kind of like, 
you know, mess it up or something to make you still attach to them because they're so terrified of the idea of you moving on and like forgetting about them. And that's something that's like a major fear of theirs. So I really hope that helped you guys. Um, please let me know if it resonated in the comments and make sure to like and subscribe. Um, and also if you have any reading ideas, it is Mercury retrograde. So I'm feeling like my readings are a little loopier than usual <laughs> lately. And I'm also kind of running out of ideas. So let me know if there's something you want to see a reading about. And I will definitely, um, you know, compile lists and go through them and possibly use your ideas. So let me know if you have any suggestions and I will be back very shortly for another video. So make sure you're subbed if you want to see that. And yeah, sending you guys so much love and light. Bye. Hello, my lovely pie of fours. This is going to be your reading. If you guys picked this dragon fruit pastry with a walnut and a blueberry, hopefully you can see the details and a little kiwi slice. Um, I love dragon fruit and I have it for breakfast pretty often. So I definitely think it's a great choice for a pastry, but let's get into your reading. I pre-pulled some cards. So we do have the seven of wands, justice reversed, two of wands reversed, the hanged man reversed, the four of wands reversed, the four of swords reversed, the judgment reversed, the chariot reversed. The Seven of Pentacles, Queen of Cups, High Priestess, the Reversed, the Eight of Wands Reversed, and the Seven of Cups and the Nine of Pentacles. Ooh, it's a lot to get out there. But um, so you guys, what I'm getting is this person, um, you know, they perceive the world in a way that's very like um, cutthroat kind of. And this person is not opposed to like lying, cheating, whatever to get their way. Um, They've actually accumulated a lot of bad karma and that's what Spirit is telling me um, is this person is very short-sighted. They keep thinking that if they like screw some someone out of some money that they, you know, that they win, not really realizing that there are other bigger factors at play and that like karma exists and that just because you screwed someone out of you know, some money doesn't mean that's not going to come back to you tenfold. Um, and so this person already has a bad karma in the bank specifically related to what they did to you. So, you know, that's good to know that that is definitely going to be taken care of. And that has definitely been noticed by spirit. And so not to worry about that because they are specifically saying that the karma definitely, you know, the karmic debt is happening. And so, yeah. Um, you guys are actually the first pile that that has come through for. So I'm not just saying that for everyone um, at all, but they, they want to bring that up to you so that, you know, maybe that's something you were worried about. Maybe you thought they had gotten away with it and that, you know, they were going to be um, living this awesome life. But what Spirit is telling me is like, no. <laughs> and a lot of times Spirit takes time to, you know, Par parse out the karma because it has to be done in the right way. It has to be done correctly and um, at like the perfect time and you'll see someone, you know, it's like if someone gets karma and it's right away and it's not that big, like it's not going to be that big of a deal. A lot of times, like I said, when the it's the bigger event, it, spirit has to take time to like plan it out in the natural so that it happens, you know, and it makes sense. And, um, so it needs time, they need time to kind of have everything line up accordingly for like the big fall. So I feel like if you feel like this person's succeeding or doing really well right now, you know, just wait and keep your eye on them because it will definitely not be the case long term. but you don't even need to be keeping your eye on them because, you know, spirit is taking care of this is what they're telling me. Um, I feel like this person is very like money oriented, success oriented. They're very also aware of like their public person. Perception. They're very interested in publicly benefiting and having um, people be impressed with them and with their name and having kind of this, um, you know, cachet around them or whatever. And so, yeah, that is a major motivating factor for them that probably led them to this. Um, I feel like they just felt like they could screw you over and nothing would happen. Maybe they perceive you as not having the kind of power to be able to fight back against them, but it's like they thought that somehow screwing you over would lead to more money or more power for them. And so that was their motivation. But what Spirit is telling me is that a lot of their blessings 
blessings and a lot of their positive momentum forward is actually going to be blocked as a result of this. So um, they have not been kind of tuning into like the spiritual truths. They may spend time thinking about things, but they're very, um, I feel like in a way they wouldn't even want to think about karma or to know about karma because they kind of would know at the back of their mind that they've got it, you know, they don't have the best situation. It's kind of like someone with a really bad credit score who like doesn't want to think about it, doesn't want to talk about credit, doesn't want to, you know, do anything like that mentions finances because you know it's like a painful memory for them and they know deep down that they're gonna have trouble you know applying to an apartment or whatever else they may want to do financially and in the same vein this person knows deep down that they messed up and that if they were honest with themselves about karma that they have something bad coming their way and so they just kind of blot it out um, but it's like that just leads them down the same path it's kind of like again that example of someone with a really bad credit score who just decides I'm not gonna think about money and so they end up racking up even more credit card debt and even more getting themselves into even more trouble whereas if they just sat down probably with a financial planner and were like okay let me deal with this situation head-on they'd be in a lot better situation and could you know be better off than if they went on some wild spending spree because they're avoiding the issue. You know what I mean? So this person has really gotten themselves into a pickle is what Spirit is telling me. Um, and they've done a lot, you know, they're very money and reputation focused. They're very much obsessed with how they're perceived by others and also with like finances and winning and they're very competitive in general um, and so a lot of the things that they actually think that they are working on that are going to work out for them in their minds aren't going to work out the way they planned so a lot of the business items or financial things that they think they've lined up are actually going to kind of backfire or just not lead to the kind of financial situation that they were hoping for um, and so that will be an interesting moment to see them kind of of have the realization that like oh maybe I messed up with this um, so other cards I pulled were emotional loss transformation throat chakra rejoice and celebrate and these are all reversed these last three rejoice and celebration reversed new beginnings light heart chakra love begins sacral chakra mental conflict authority power prosperity begins kind of overlapping and running out of space but yeah so this person is super you know obsessed with the idea of power and being on top of making money it's like they want to you know they might look up to certain billionaires and like have pictures of like Elon Musk on their wall or someone you know that they just like really look up to financially um, and it's like that's what they want for themselves like this person probably considers themselves a hustler probably considers themselves a really hard worker and in their mind if they have to screw a few people over step on a few people on the way up it's totally worth it so long as they get what they want which is basically money power and some kind of public reputation they want to be known as a success and as someone with money they don't just want to be one of those wealthy people that you know wears like you know an old hand-me-down sweater and drives their old car they definitely want people to know oh this person's a success oh this person has money and this is something that really guides their behavior and this is probably why they have a lot of <laughs> bad karma coming their way because this is a really dumb way to be living your life. Um, I mean, you can make money in this world, but you know, there's other factors at play. And if you have to sell your soul to get money, I mean, that's not really a, you know, it's not really a good exchange at the end of the day. Um, and you can come into money and abundance and all the things you want while still keeping your soul intact, your dignity intact and honoring the dignity and respect of other people. So I feel like this person missed the memo and they had this idea that the only way for them to succeed is if they screw people over, is if they lie, cheat, steal, and they're okay with that. Like that's just the worldview they have um, is like whatever it takes to get to the top, that's what I'll do. And, um, and so it's like, yeah, they're, 
they're totally okay with lying as well and that comes in really strongly so I feel like this person is the kind of person where you can't trust a word they say they might have act really nice to you um, you know when you first got to know them or, or they were really smooth at one point or they're really smooth to others maybe they were also always rude to you but they were like nice to other people and kind of silver tongued in that way, like charming. I feel like this person has a bit of a charmer energy where they kind of know what to say to um, make people trust them. They kind of know, you know, how to act to come off as like, oh, they're, they're just a nice person. But the reality is that they, um, they, they're very calculating the whole time. They know exactly what they're doing and they don't care, you know? They, they don't feel guilt about it. They don't feel worried about it. They're not trying to, um, they're not trying to like keep the peace or, um, or make things, oh, as I said that, we got peace, exactly. Um, thanks for that confirmation spirit. Um, love that when that happens. And also like community reverse. They're not trying to like be plugged into a community and really, um, and really like respect other people and treat them with dignity and really have that feeling of like, wow, everyone, um, everyone has come together and like we're all human and we all have this beautiful thing that we can contribute to the world they're not honoring anyone else all they care about is themselves and doing what it takes to get to the money and we did get all the glitter so yeah this person is very motivated by money as like the number one thing and they really don't care about anything else or anyone else that's just their you know that's their motivation all the way is money power and success and also you know like a big thing is their reputation is having people look at them and see oh wow that person is powerful or whatever and in a way it's like they kind of got a kick out of doing whatever they did to you because they feel like that makes them the powerful person and it makes you the weak person they have this very disjointed way of looking at the world where there's always a winner and always a loser and it's never possible for you know both sides to win or for one person to come out you know maybe a little better but the other person did okay too it's always got to be the winner and the loser and the more they feel like someone's in the loser position the more they feel like the winner the more powerful they feel so they're constantly kind of trying to bring that out in others trying to make others feel less powerful trying to make others doubt themselves it's like this person the only thing they are focused on is getting ahead for themselves I feel like they wouldn't even be possible to get that close to like uh, ro romantic partners or family members or even their own children because at the end of the day they're so thinking about themselves and we got compass and it's like yeah that's that's what they're like do north is like that's how they decide what to do it's always how does it benefit me and if they act like they care about anyone else it's just that it's an act it's just something they're doing temporarily to kind of win someone's trust, win someone's approval. I feel like this person knows that they have to act a certain way. They can't literally be like, I'm a sociopath and tell people, you know, for, hi, like nice to meet you. Yeah, I'm a sociopath and I don't care about anyone but me or whatever. They have to act like they are, you know, somewhat nice, somewhat sweet. And they know that in order to get ahead. Again, this person is almost like maybe some of them would be sociopaths because I feel like this person acts very unhuman. They act very like, um, like almost robotic about the situation. Like they don't, like they're not emotionally plugged in or connected. They're very cut off from their emotions and just fully leaning into like, how do I succeed and whatever it takes, I'll do that. Um, and so it, yeah, it's very like cold and calculated and they might have some issues with expressing their emotions or with um, accessing that part of themselves. They might have you know other issues with like having depth in relationships or with having you know the people that should be close to them trust them it might be one of those situations where like they have kids and their kids want nothing to do with them and their kids don't want to talk to them don't contact them on father's day or on mother's day or christmas you know their kids are just like 
this person is horrible and like that's always a big red flag when you see something like that going on you know um, of course there's also some bad kids in the world who can you know be that way to their parents but the point is is that this person really is very incapable of having those close interpersonal relationships that you would expect I feel like they might be able to use money or to convince or lie to people to get them into relationships but when it comes down to the emotional depth, they're very incapable of going there and actually, you know, entering that loving, deep energy. So if there was ever a point in which they acted sweet or kind to you, just know that that was an act and that they didn't mean it and that you shouldn't even take it seriously because it's kind of like you shouldn't take any of this personally because this is how this person is to everyone. It's kind of like you wouldn't be upset if like your laptop or your phone um, didn't like you. You know what I mean? You'd be like, oh, well, that's just an object. So it's fine. Like, who cares? You know, like you wouldn't be mad if you know, your laptop calculated a certain bill as being higher than you expected. You wouldn't be like, hey, you're supposed to cut me a break. You know, you're, I've been using you for like five years now. You're supposed to be, I thought we had a close relationship. I, I know that bill said this, but can't you give me like 10% off? Because you know that, that that laptop does not have a brain. It can't, you know, actually factor it, like factor in the relationship or cut off 10% in the way maybe a shopkeeper would if you were really close to a shopkeeper. So it'd be kind of weird to ask someone to take 10% off your bill, but you know what I mean? Like you could maybe, you know, go for that human connection and try to get a different reaction out of them. But with a piece of machinery, you always know what it's going to give to you. And that's what you should expect from this person. They're just very calculated. They're very cold. They're always going to do what works for them. And they don't really care about anyone else. Um, at all all they care about is like the money situation and the power situation and whatever it takes to get there is what they're going to do and anything that detracts from that is something that they are going to avoid so you know this person was looking out for numero uno the whole time they were focusing on themselves they want to win at all costs and in a way they see you as like an obstacle to that they see you as like blocking that somehow if anything you could take that as this as a compliment that they see you as such a worthy opponent that they're willing to you know invest all this energy into being cruel to you or like focusing their attention on you because for sure this person is calculated and they wouldn't be doing that unless you were really you know had the potential to be so successful and that's kind of what spirit is telling me when we get the victory card i really think this is for you i think you guys may be coming into some victory or some financial abundance you know i always say bad karma you know as much as it sucks when it happens it's like money in the bank and I have made it a practice for myself because I tend to get a little bit heated when someone screws me over it really annoys me <laughs> I have a, a few planets in Aries and so it's like um and Capricorn so when someone really goes out of their way to be cruel to me I feel like mm, and it makes me so upset but I made it a practice to to thank them in my mind and as crazy as that may sound or as much as you may not want to ever thank someone who's really caused you pain and of course if you have deep trauma or something that's not what I'm talking about and process that in however way feels good to you which very well probably does not involve thanking the person um, but for me I have try to get into the habit of thanking someone if they're cruel or mean to me especially if it's a smaller thing because i feel like they are giving me good karma and it's like thank you for making sure that i get those extra blessings from spirit thank you because i know spirit's watching and so thank you so much for literally just depositing a bunch of karma in my karma bank like oh my god i i so appreciate you for that now i know that wasn't their intention and I know that that's not what they 
thought they were doing when they tried to be really nasty to me, but that's what they were doing whether they were aware of it or not. And so I feel like what Spirit is telling me in this reading is that not only does this person have bad karma coming towards them, but actually that you're going to be blessed as a result of whatever this person did to you um, and their cruelty and stuff. Like you are actually going to be totally blessed from this situation and you are going to come into more abundance than you would have if you had not run into this person and had them act so nastily towards you. So this person's selfishness, carelessness, and lack of concern for the feelings of others is actually going to end up benefiting you in the end and is actually going to end up having you, you know, be blessed up and having you glow up. And, you know, this is going to be um, a really good thing for you. As much as it may not seem that way, it really is. And it's also going to be a really bad thing for them, which I mean, like I said, I'm a little Aries cap and I'm a little petty and I like to know. It's like, oh good, you're going to get the bad karma too. I, I'm, I mean, in the spiritual community, you're not supposed to say that, but you know, let's be real. It's kind of fun to see someone who went out of their way to hurt you or to screw you over have the same thing happen to them. And that's definitely the energy that's coming through um, for this. This person, it's funny because right now I feel like they're very smug about whatever happened between you guys. Um, they're kind of like laughing in my ear, like a creepy little laugh. It's like, ugh kind of slimy sounding. And so, yeah, this person feels very smug. They kind of feel like they really pulled one over or they won or like, <laughs> like they get a kick out of it. And it's funny because I can just see that the energy here is like, you're not gonna be laughing now, like for long, have your fun now, enjoy the laughter now because it's not gonna last that long and it's gonna be a whole nother emotion in you know however long, five to 10 years or maybe even less. But spirit a lot of times will let someone be in this energy for a while. You know, they will let them think they're getting ahead just so that they can kind of really rub salt in the wound and just just really let this person, once they really get kind of super smug and feel like they're on top of the world, that's when it comes falling down. So yeah, that moment is kind of coming towards this person. It's just a matter of time. And I feel like it's going to be done in some way where they are able to see you succeed and they are able to see you like do really well and it's going to drive them absolutely crazy. Um, so yeah, even though they feel like they've won now, it's not going to last a long time. This person is used to pursuing things in such a dishonest and disingenuous and just a nasty type of energy that um, it's just going to boomerang back on them. And yeah, it's just, it's just coming in really strongly that the karma is the karma is coming in and a lot of their blessings that they are trying to manifest are currently blocked as a result um, and I think on the other hand you guys have more blessings that want to come your way you guys have success and victory heading in your direction um, even though this person has I think genuinely put a lot of work in I do think this person is a hard worker but again they're motivated by such nasty intentions that it really the hard work doesn't doesn't make up for it you know what I mean like it's kind of like yeah it might might be really hard work like burying a dead body you know of someone you like killed that doesn't mean that you know you should be um that that counts as like a good karmic thing we get we get hard work points and we get karmic points for hard work when we're working on something that is really positive serves the world in a good way but you don't really get any points if you're doing some nasty behavior so i do think that this person um even though they've been putting in a lot of work it's it's going to be cut off it's not going to lead to the kind of blessings that they want um and you on the other hand who i think are kind of spiritual are kind of aware as a person of you know some of the spiritual laws and truth um, you are going to see those blessings come in but just know that this person the reason why they acted this way to you is just because they are nasty to everyone in general they're very selfish they're very self-focused they don't really care about what anyone else thinks about what anyone else is going through about anyone else's emotions they really just think of themselves so yeah don't you know don't even take it on or take it seriously um 
just just do your best to know that karma is going to come in in the long term and it's just kind of a waiting game on your end to see like what exactly is this all gonna go down because i do think it's kind of planned and we did get um one ring circus for one of these cards i think and so that is going to be kind of like this like moment where you get to watch watch it all happen watch it all go down and just see um like enjoy the show is what I'm hearing. <laughs> Just enjoy the moment, enjoy seeing it all watch out, go down because I do think it's gonna be a lot of fun to see on your end, not on their end. <laughs> But I really hope that helped you guys. Please let me know if it resonated in the comments and make sure to like and subscribe. I post these videos every few days. So if you wanna see more, make sure you're subbed. Also, if you have any ideas for readings, it's Mercury Retrograde. So um, even my readings, I feel like they get a little loopy around Mercury Retrograde. And also I'm running out of reading ideas. So if you want to see something, please let me know and I will definitely add it to my list of reading ideas. Um, and yeah, I will see you guys in the next reading. Sending you so much love and light. Have an amazing day, guys. Bye.